It's a story of, as I see it, three families. There's your family in New Jersey, the family we begin with in this book, uh, which has its own struggles. Uh, and then there's the Trump family, the what Mark Meadows refers to you as staying in the family, and others refer to the family, uh, meaning staying on the team of the Trump team. And then toward the end of the story, there's the family of support that you discover that now includes your lawyers. And you were led to that family by maybe the key person in that family, who's a 97-year-old man, who I know is watching this show tonight, who decades before you were born, did what you did and went into a congressional investigation of a Republican president and told the truth. Let's look at that moment. Mr. Butterfield, are you aware of the installation of any listening devices in the Oval Office of the President? I was aware of listening devices. Yes, sir. Mr. Butterfield, as far as you know, from your own personal knowledge, uh, from 1970 then until the present time, all of the President's conversations and the officers mentioned, and on the telephones mentioned, were recorded, as far as you know. That's correct. And as far as you know, those tapes are still available. As far as I know, but I've been away for four months, sir. I have no further questions. How did Alexander Butterfield become your guide through this challenge? I reached a point in April of 2022 where I was reading through pages of my transcripts that had been made public. And it was, for lack of a better phrasing, but I, I sort of had this mental breakdown because I, I saw that I became the person that I never wanted to become. And I, I knew how far gone I was from that person and how far gone I was from the person that I wanted to become when I entered public service. But I also was able to recognize that there was a slim window where I could correct course and I could find a second chance. And it would be hard, but I wanted to try. So I, I began, I connected with an old friend, uh, Alyssa Farrah Griffin, who was my first guiding light in this journey. And I, Alyssa, I worked with in the Trump administration and she spoke out after, the, after January 6th on the 7th about, against uh, what happened that day. But then I was I was driving up to New Jersey as I do when I um, need to get a little bit of relief from DC, and I start googling Watergate, and I was thinking there had to be somebody, there had to be somebody in Watergate that had a similar position to me, that had known a lot, and that had a position that required this incredible uh, incredible amount of trust and confidence that ended up doing the right thing. And that's when I came across Alex Butterfield's name. I searched his name and I was like, he must have had to write a book. And he didn't in the immediate. And then I found this book that he worked on with Bob Woodward, The Last of the President's we, Men. We, we both have our copies. Of <laughs> <laughs> this is my beloved copy right. of the book. Right. So I ordered two copies of the book, had them shipped to my parents' house in New Jersey. And I read it three times in a night. And you know, I saw in Alex, the person that I wanted to be. I saw somebody that had not only this incredible moral character and this incredible American patriot, but he, he knew that if he was ever asked to testify, he would be forthcoming. He would tell the truth and he had no reservations about that. And that's how I wanted to be. And that's where I wanted to get myself. I was in a really dark period of my life, but Alex sharing his story nearly 50 years later with Bob Woodward is the reason I'm sitting here with you today. And, you know, if there's anything, hopefully we'll have more time to discuss it too, because I mean, this, this book was profound and I think Alex is one of the most incredible people I've had the honor to know and meet. But um, the fact that he was willing to share his story, but also share the truth, you know, history, history will, will repeat itself if we don't have good people in government willing to stop corruption. And Alex is so emblematic, emblematic of that. But it's so striking to me that uh, someone who 
did what you did 50 years ago speaks to you through this book, in effect, 50 years after the fact, helps you find your way uh, to do the same thing. <clears throat> and now you give us a book that someone's going to pick up this book 50 years from now, 150 years from now, we don't know. Someone's going to pick up this book and do the same thing that you did because of Alexander Butterfield giving you that guidance. That was one of the first things that Alex and I spoke about. So it, we actually reached out to you and your staff after we saw Alex on your program. Mm -hmm. And this anecdote is not in the book, but I'll share it with you here. When you had Alex on your program, I was in a hotel in Atlanta and my mom texted me and she was like, you need to turn on Lawrence O'Donnell. And I turned on the TV and we had also tried to get in touch with Alex mm -hmm. different ways that we just kept hitting dead ends. And I saw that you had Alex on your program and I just started to cry because I, you know, I, I saw the man and I, I hoped that he had watched my testimony and I, we had tried to get in touch with him. And it was just that connection to him that I, at least I knew that he had seen it. And I felt that connection where, you know, if I never got to speak with him, I had that much where I had your capsule of what he said to you that night. The first time that Alex and I spoke over Zoom, he asked me to promise him that if somebody ever came to me 50 years or however long from now with a similar proposition or a similar, find, finding themselves in a similar position that we found ourselves in, he, made me, he asked me to promise them that I would help them. And it was just one of those profoundly but sad full circle moments too because, you know, I'm sure that Alex didn't think that 50 years from then that he would have the impact that he had on my life and the, my decision to come forward. But I hope that 50 year, years from now, we don't have the same issues where we're dealing with corrupt presidencies. But I did promise him that I would. And that's also a big reason that I decided to write the book, because if I can help one person mm -hmm. make that difficult decision, whether it's you're dealing with a corrupt, pre you're, you're working in a corrupt presidency and you are afraid to speak out or you want to speak out, or you need to stick up for yourself in somewhere else, another part of your life. The impact that his story had on me, you know, there's more ways I can fulfill his promise. Well, anyone in high school or college now who's thinking about going to work in Washington needs to read this book. Anyone who has started to work in Washington and is in their early 20s had better read this book. It's all there. Um, it's, um, it, 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 there's, Alex Butterfield gets the last line of this book, which I have thought about reading on the show, and I don't want to uh, as a spoiler alert, and also because I wouldn't be able to read it without crying because I can be a crybaby here, so I'm going to skip that. And uh, in lieu of, <laughs> of that, um, Alex sent us a little message today just for you. Let's look at that. Cassidy, I want to tell you something. I was so impressed, as were others who heard you, when you gave your testimony before the Congress. You're, 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 you're very effective, and it comes through well that, that you're your own person. I mean, you say I... I inspired you. Uh, I'm happy if I did, but I, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. You're very much your own person. And uh, you come across wonderfully well. And I think you are and will continue to be an inspiration to other young people. Uh, I didn't have uh, the pressures when I testified, but I'm sure you had. Uh, and uh, that's a big factor. But uh, as I say, you just, you, you did very well. You come across as though you're speaking from the heart. And, and, and that's very clear. When you met him uh, out in California, went out to see him, you shed a few tears into that cashmere sweater of his when you gave him the big hug. 
of his Grey Casimir's letter. I mean, and thank you for that. Uh, Alex just has one of those souls that, you know, I'm so fortunate to have him in my life. And, you know, it sounds so hokey, but I think that we all need to strive to be a little bit more like Alex Butterfield, just somebody that has this upstanding moral integrity and character. And it's, you know, it's not just that he came forward and testified truthfully and honorably, but he cares deeply about people. He cares deeply about this country. And Alex has helped me in more ways than than I can describe, but you know, even in the two times I've had the opportunity and the privilege to spend time with him in California, he's, he's always going to be a part of my heart.